What's up guys? Today we have a steel MS362 on the bench. Uh, the complaint is that the customer can't even pull the rope. It's like it's locked up. So we're going to properly diagnose this saw and we'll figure out what's wrong with it. Let's go. Holy moly guys, this guy was not lying. You cannot look at this elasto start on this pull rope. I am pulling the crap out of that. And this engine is locked up. I'm gonna go ahead and I've already got the top cover loose, but check this out. No spark plug. I've already got the plug out and it will not, it's locked. I've already made sure that everything was good on the clutch side. So guys, we need to do some digging to figure out what's wrong with the saw. The first thing I'm gonna do though, is pull the muffler off. exhaust gasket now I was actually able to break this saw loose with my scrunch on the clutch side but it's real tight so let's go ahead and take a look at the piston and see what it looks like now the piston itself does not look too terribly bad I can rock the piston up and down and I can tell that the rings aren't stuck. But if we go up, we start seeing the piston being washed out where the oil grooves are. You can see that scuff right there. And as we go on up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove the two carburetor attaching nuts. And we'll pull the intake baffle off here. And just note that we've got a little bit of sawdust ingestion. That's inevitable. I mean, it's, in my opinion, steel has never really had a good air filter for any of their equipment. If they would put a seal around this thing, when you clamshell this filter onto the base here, if they had some sort of good seal there instead of just hard plastic on hard plastic I don't think that we would have the issues that we see constantly with dirt ingestion before I go much further I'm going to go ahead and put the air filter back on and I'm just going to give it a good blowing off because it is packed in there tight alrighty guys so for the sake of video time I went ahead and popped the air filter base off it's just held in with two grommets right here. There's one there and one there. And basically now you just remove the carburetor. It just pulls right off. Your fuel line is here and your carburetor mounting uh, gaskets here and this is the port for the fresh air butterfly on the carburetor the intake block off adapter that we're going to use is this little guy here and as we can tell there is the part number if you guys are interested 1148 90 1200 and that comes from steel itself so let's go ahead and get it slid on to the engine here And get it pushed on and then you're going to reinstall your carburetor nuts and cinch this on down just hand tight 
Now we need to block off the exhaust port. You can reuse the muffler or you can use this adapter right here. And as you can tell, that part number, if you're interested, is 1123-855-4200. Well guys, that adapter didn't line up with the knotting holes on this particular saw. So I went ahead and loosely reinstalled the muffler. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go down with this uh, block of rubber in between the muffler and the cylinder head. And you're just gonna feed that down between the screws like this. And then we're gonna tighten the muffler up and that's going to block off our exhaust port. All right, we got our piece of rubber. Evenly tighten. Now we need to reinstall the spark plug just so we can close off the cylinder head here. And keep in mind that you want the decomp valve to be out. And if this is leaking, this is a good time to check your decomp valve as well. All right, I've got my vacuum and pressure gauge hooked up to the nipple on the test port here. We've got everything buttoned up. We've got a spark plug in it. Exhaust is blocked off here. So let's go ahead and pump this thing up to about, oh, 10 PSI. And let's just see if we're holding. I'm gonna go just a little bit past 10. And it's holding good. Now I'm going to slide my furl down and then we're gonna check for a vacuum. Sometimes a seal will hold under pressure but won't under a vacuum. So we're gonna pull a vacuum on this crankcase as much as my pump will allow. And it's stopping right there. So let's go ahead and check that. And we're good. I'm going to push the decomp valve in on the cylinder head and let's see what happens. Our decomp valve is also good. No, we don't have any air leaks at seals or intake boots or, uh, you know, where the cylinder meets or, you know, everything, the structural, the mechanical integrity of the engine passes my test and so now the last thing that we need to do is uh well we need to pull the carburetor part and check it but there's no way to test the carburetor to see if it was running lean or not so we're gonna have to pull the cylinder head and that's uh that'll open up a whole new can of worms so that we can see down in this engine and see what's going on figuring out why this engine so hard to pull and is locking up. Get this spark plug wire out of the way and we should be able to move this boot. It's flexible enough to get to our mounting screws that hold it on, there's four of them. Make it up past your throttle arm here. Just clips in. I'm not even gonna take it all the way out. I'm just gonna let it rest right there. We got plenty of room now. As you can tell, here's the cylinder head. We're gonna remove the muffler and then we're gonna take this anti-vibe spring off and then the four bolts and we should be able to slide this jug right off.
I'm going to do one final cleaning. I'm going to try to get all this saw cleaned up as best I can before we pull that cylinder off. You don't want any, or you don't want any dirt and debris to get down in there, but it's inevitable because of all the creases and cracks that you cannot physically get to by just blowing it out. So we'll just have to be super careful not to let anything fall down into the engine when we get to that point. All right, let's pull this jug off of here. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the top wrap handle just to gain a little more clearance. Just pull the cylinder straight up now. Be super careful. not be that hard to pull off put your finger on the piston to keep it from slapping down and there is the cylinder connecting rod is stuck like chuck check this out it is stuck on the crank pin and that makes total sense now to why this engine would free up and then lock up and then free up and then lock up because of the bearings my goodness it's going to need a crank, probably a new piston and cylinder kit. I'm going to work with this just a minute to see if I can't get that crank in the upwards position. Hold on just a minute. Now I can understand why it was so hard to pull that jug off. The uh, connecting rod wasn't moving and it, was, it had it all locked up. But I've unlocked it, and as you can tell, that crank bearing is a crispy critter. Now, if you go to turn this thing around, you want to pull the rope, it locks, and then now it's now the connecting rod is locked to the crankshaft. It's crazy. But why did that happen? manufacturer defect maybe this saw ain't that old uh, a lean condition could cause that cause the uh, the main bearing not to get sufficient oil I need to pull this piston off so I can see the underside of it see what it looks like remove the circlip on the I believe it's the left side of the piston and then we are able to drive out the pin ever so slightly. Don't hammer on this thing. If it won't go, it's not the end of the world. Just slide that piston pin out of there. Should be enough to remove the piston now. Just inspect your small end wrist pin bearing.
it's a little bit coked, but that's not overheated on this side. Put that piston out of the way, we should be able to kind of see more clearly of what's going on here. Right here is the loosest part of that rod bearing. And whenever you go to rotate it, it locks right there. And you are able to uh, push it through, but at that point right there is where the darn thing likes to lock up. And it's just not good. We have definite up and down play. So that means that our needle roller bearings have failed on the crank and that is you can't replace that you have to buy a crank and rod assembly and by the time you do that you could just go buy a new saw I, I hate to say that but that's just the way the ball bounces guys my initial thought on this saw was that it had been overheated but I have ruled that out we ruled out that it had an air leak and basically it's just a crank failure it's uh it's a not a good deal you just don't see a catastrophic crank failure like this uh it's had I, it's plenty of oil in the gas like i said uh piston has just you know normal scuffage the piston pin came out easy usually when a saw overheats that piston pin you gotta drive that mother out and it came out just easy as pie so hey I don't know what to tell you except it's crankshaft failure. Uh, could, why did it fail? The amount of just super fine sawdust is all over this saw. So, I mean, it's obvious that this thing is being abused because the, the bar is, and chain, or the chain is probably dull as crap. And they're just bearing down on this thing, just overloading the absolute pee out of this thing and uh, that could attribute to a bearing failure especially on the clutch side however normally you just don't have that failure right there anyway guys hey if this content helped you out please give me a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button and while you're there, subscribe and click that bell so you'll get all my new videos. Y'all have a good hump day. More Medic One.